Hi, my name is Subhashish. I had the opportunity recently to talk to Gani Maya Sen, who is um, the native speaker of the Kusunda language. Kusunda is spoken by just her, uh, and she is 85 right now. After we recorded, the translator told me that um, this probably was the uh, longest ever documentation uh, in an audiovisual form so far, but it might also be the last one because she's so old uh, to give an interview uh, to any researcher or, or, or language archivist. That kind of saddened me because, you know, after her, uh, once she's gone, there will be no one to speak the language. The language will be totally gone from the face of Earth. There are about 7,000 languages in the world, and UNESCO has estimated that half of those languages will die in a century's time unless we do something about them, unless we document them. My project, Open Speaks, is to create an ecosystem around languages to bring people on board, to train them how to document languages using uh, using technology, and then preserve them and 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 use those uh, use those uh, archives to kind of bring the wisdom back from different languages and cultures, different societies to the mainstream society. Um, India, my my own country, has lost about two hundred and fifty languages in the last fifty years. And uh, there are about 197 languages um, that are in the pipeline uh, to, to kind of go extinct um, in the near future. And uh, we only have 22 languages as the official languages. Uh, and that's, that's the same case in many other countries where the official language policy um, kind, of, kind of focuses on a few languages. And there are many other languages that are, that are just left out on their own um, for the community to, to, to go about the way they want to do. But at the same time, those languages which are not documented might just die any time. And when a, language, when a language die, we lose the cultural nuances of that society. We lose the, the way those people talk to each other. They share their emotions and so on. Um, and, and that's very important to preserve in its natural way, which is the native language of those people. Uh, and then we can translate that into uh, different languages. Wikipedia does a great job in, in preserving languages and take languages to, to the new level. But it also goes through a viability sort of test. That means that a language which is spoken, which is spoken widely, which, is spo- which, is, which has printed publications, which has you know, regular newspapers, are only eligible to, become, uh, Wikip- to have Wikipedia of their own. Uh, so what happens to the languages that are that are not spoken by many people, doesn't have a great education system in that language, uh, it's only used at home as an oral language, uh, those languages don't make it to, the, uh, to, uh, to becoming a Wikipedia. And it's important that we as uh, Wikipedians or, or even the larger uh, open science community document languages. Uh, so my project Open Speaks, uh, which which was initially the the which was initially to create uh, a toolkit for preserving languages, is now becoming uh, more of a larger. Uh, it's kind of focusing on a larger aspect of language documentation. So it's not just the software or, or training of people, uh, but it's also a lot of other things that are required to kind of bring the consciousness among people so that they uh, document the languages around them. Uh, so I got a grant from the National Geographic last year, and that grant kind of enabled me to kind of visit uh, to communities and, and have a very intimate in interactions with communities and and document all of that, record all of those things in audiovisual form. Um, the way we do that, uh, with we in the sense the the small community that I've managed to build around it. So a colleague of mine, Pratik Patnaik, uh, and I worked together on this project. And what we did is we went to communities, uh, had collaborations with some of the uh, stakeholders of the language. So for example, local uh, nonprofits that that are already working for language and cultural preservation uh, and so we worked with these with these these um, collaborators and we tried to uh, visit all these communities in the in the in their own houses the the place where they live uh, and breathe 
and we try to document the way they cook, the way they make their alcohol, the way they sing the songs during their festivals and weddings, um, their folklore, uh, and all these kinds of cultural uh, nuances that make those languages unique, those uh, communities unique. And then what we did is um, we worked with the with some of the translators that understood the language and also were bilingual. Uh, for for example, so we worked for three endangered languages from the Indian state of Odisha, uh, and and Odia is the official language of the of the state. So most people, uh, and particularly the translator, uh, were comfortable uh, was comfortable uh, in, in translating, um, you know, every single word, the, uh, the native language speakers of those communities spoke into Odia. Uh, so we did a three way, a three step process. So first we translated, uh, we created, um, the, the, the captions, uh, for, for all the conversations that they had with those speakers, all the answers to our questions, uh, during the interview. And then we translated those um, those into Odia, which is uh, which is uh, the official language of the uh, state of uh, Odisha. And then we translated um, the the captions from Odia to English. So when it goes out to public as documentaries or or, or even archives, people will be able to. Uh, well, a lot of people will be able to understand uh, English, and and maybe some of them who are bilingual could translate um, those captions into their own language. the The reason we did that is is really simple. We want more people to use the 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 rep- these repositories, and that's how we are kind of bridging the gap um, that exists in the oral level and the and the uh, and and take them all the way to the scientific community, the community that is interested to, to talk about and discuss about uh, other communities in the rest of the world. Um, and the project is now uh, in, in kind of in its uh, adolescence, I would say. Uh, so we, we, we've got a grant, so there are a couple of people that are working uh, on the project. Uh, and and we, have, uh, we have a couple of languages that are uh, in the pipeline to be, uh, to be kind of uh, you know, uh, translated and, and all of that. And once we finish uh, the entire process of, of documenting these languages, we are going to release them as documentaries. So National Geographic is going to use that content uh, for their own publication and so on. But, um, you know, after some time, uh, I'll be allowed to kind of make those documentaries public, make those archives public. And that, that's the best part because uh, being a Wikipedian, I want to take back all these to Wikipedia and, and make Wikipedia a repository uh, of, of endangered knowledge. Um, so Wikimedia Commons will have specific categories where I'll be, you know, pushing all these content with, of course, um, the, 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 the caption being translated into different languages. Uh, in some of the places, in some of the languages where there have, they already have their own writing system, we try to create tools so that the people could type in their own language. So, uh, and we didn't plan for that. Uh, it just happened because we found out that the community needs an input tool for their, for their, uh, you know, for writing their language. Um, Today, uh, most of the community, most of these communities that we went to have access to cell phones, have access to smartphones, uh, and that enables them to access the internet. And it's important that they manage to share part of that knowledge in their own language, communicate in their own language on the internet. So something that's going to be, you know, existent for the near future, uh, the the current generation and the future generation would be able to kind of communicate in their own language. And so the language policy that's kind of uh, is is stopping the languages to grow will no longer be a, a big barrier for these languages. They will be able to, the people will be able to communicate between themselves, uh, not just in physical spaces, but, but online. Um, so I would request all of you uh, who are watching this video to kind of uh, make the small effort. If you're meeting someone who speaks um, an endangered language or, or even a language that's, that's spoken by a less number of people, try to document that. Try to have a video or, uh, or audio documentation of that. And once, we f- once you finish with uh, that process, uh, use uh, an open source tool like amara.org 
and and then then try to create the uh, the caption uh, in the native language first, uh, followed by a language that both uh, the speaker and you um, understand. And then try to create something like English, so it could be translated into multiple languages. Uh, so that's that's a request that I have for all of you. If you can do that, that will be a great benefit for the humanity. And if you could bring all of that into something like Commons, which which allows uh, open licensing, that will be really great because the the knowledge that these languages have within them are so valuable that they cannot be restricted with the copyright laws. Uh, it is important that those um, those languages, uh, the documentation of those languages are made available with open standards, in open standards, and so that more people have access to the knowledge. Hi, I'm Pratik. A language is not just a set of words with a definite grammar. In order to get a more complete idea, a more holistic view of what a language means, we need to properly understand the circumstances in which the speakers of a language grow and uh, the environment in which a language has thrived to become what it is in this day and age. With OpenSpeaks, we often try to produce documentation that helps an outsider get a more complete idea of the entire jigsaw puzzle of which the language is just one piece. While shooting, we make an attempt to get more real-world conversations trying to make subjects more familiar with the camera instead of uh, capturing artificial conversations. That helps us get a closer look of what the language is like when it is spoken at the ground level. We try to do even more by thinking out of the box and creating uh, more digital content with the language such as uh, using the power of social media to create more memes and create more content with the language or uh, using an established medium like Wikipedia or Global Voices to build more online content for an endangered language so that it finds a new lease of life through the online medium. With a little bit of creativity, we can think out of the box and try to create uh, different kinds of tools for languages which we think can be useful for them in the long run. For example, there is a project we have created together called uh, Kathavidhana which comes under OpenSpeaks as of now in which we build uh, databases and uh, databases of audio recordings of words being pronounced of a language by native speakers. Uh, this in turn expands to create an open database which can further be used for text-to-speech applications and speech-to-text applications and uh, uh, we hope artificial intelligence in the long run. Therefore, we make a conscious attempt to capture more of the culture surrounding a language because Without the culture, we often do not get the connotations of most of the words that native speakers use. When people talk, they often talk about the things and the people surrounding them and about the circumstances that have made them what they are and uh, what they've seen and experienced firsthand. In order to get the subtleties of the language, we need to make an attempt to bring more of the elements online so that it makes sense as a combined whole. Uh, for this, again, we have a variety of mediums, including Wikisource, for example, which can help bring the literature of those languages online so that we know how the people talk, the things that they believe in, the gods that they talk about, the superstitions that they have. We also try to get the dances and the forms of theatre and the forms of performing arts that the communities have, the types of food and the cuisine and the palate of the community and the festivals and the carnivals that they celebrate, the music and the instruments that they talk about, the stories that the grandparents tell to their children, and how various sections of the society live within the community. All of this helps to bind together the entire language along with the specifics. At the end, these resources allow us to take a step back so that we can look at the big picture and understand and appreciate the cohesive intricacies of the complex phenomenon that language is. You can find more about my project at openspeaks.com and I, I, I leave my email right below uh, so you can email me if you have any inputs or suggestions or even if you want to collaborate with me and, and work together. Uh, thank you so much for listening to me.